Let's explore now what happens in a typical evaporative environment, the Sabha system. So a Sabha is a continental environment of deposition and of diagenesis. So it's above sea level. But you can have continental Sabha where essentially the poor water in, in between the uh, sediments is rain. And so it's recharged by rain recharge in the winter season. Or you can have a coastal sabha and there the water in the pore space is actually marine water because it is recharged during storms and it's especially true during the winter where you have strong winter storms that wash over seawater on top of that continental deposit so you have then marine water so those two types of sabha are different because the continental one has uh, essentially meteoric water whereas the coastal one has marine waters but both are recharged in arid environment like today in the Middle East during winter. So during the summer period, during the dry period, something else happens and ev effectively it's evaporation. So because we have a lot of evaporation, uh, we will have evaporation of the meteoric water on the continental Sabha and evaporation of the marine water on the coastal Sabha. And in the middle, we can have some mixed zone where we have basically a mix of continental and marine water. But again, because we have evaporation, we will tend to concentrate ionic species in those fluids. So you should know by now that this is a potential for diagenesis. But the two fluids are initially different. So the type of diagenesis we expect will be different. And the Sabha is actually very easy to spot. Here's a good example from Baral Hikman in Oman. You can see the expansion ridge here of this uh, Sabha. This is a, a paleo lagoon that is now turned into a coastal Sabha. And the, those expansion ridge are due to gypsum precipitation. And they form those very nice um, honeycomb shape um, a polygonal type of, uh, of ridges. Now, if we look at the chemistry of what happens in the Sabha, we have this on this diagram. So it's a little bit of a complex diagram. So let me explain that on the vertical axis, we have the mole ratio of magnesium over calcium. And on the horizontal axis, we have the concentration of magnesium, magnesium in millimole per kilo in the fluid okay and we have two types of sabha we have the 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 coastal sabha with marine derived brines shown here on the left and the terrestrial sabha with terrestrial derived brines so in other words coming from fresh water so let's look at the evolution of this pore water as we increase evaporation through this system. So as we increase evaporation through the system, we will tend to increase the magnesium concentration. So let's start with the marine Sabha. As we increase magnesium concentration, nothing happens all the way to the point where we start to have the precipitation of a calcium carbonate first so calcium carbonate starts to precipitate and then if you remember your your uh, pathway of precipitation the next thing to precipitate is calcium sulfate so calcium carbonates precipitate calcium sulfate precipitate so that means we are precipitating calcite and gypsum and the net effect of doing this is to remove calcium from the solution so the the proportion of magnesium increases, but more importantly, the ratio of magnesium over calcium increases even more because you increase magnesium, decrease calcium through the precipitation of these two mineral species, um, calcite and, and um, gypsum. And so you increase the magnesium to calcium ratio. If you increase the magnesium to calcium ratio, it means that you are having a solution with much more magnesium, less calcium. So guess what? eventually you reach a point where you're super saturated with respect to dolomite and then you have dolomitization so you can dolomitize the existing limestone but you can also in this case precipitate a dolomite cement so that's what happens in those uh, marine sabha or this coastal sabha 
As you dolomitize, you use the magnesium that is present in the pore water. So that uh, ratio of magnesium to calcium then decreases over time until the point where you reach a point where only anhydrite and then eventually halite are precipitated, but no more um, dolomite. Now, contrast this with the, the terrestrially derived brines, and you can see that almost nothing happens on those brines, right? Because they are chemically dilute and so as you evaporate them, you concentrate whatever is in this water, but it's never enough to really lead to any significant precipitation of carbonate or certainly not um, dolomite. So you might have a little bit of anhydrite and halite that, you know, if you evaporate most of that water, but in terms of the chemistry and the mineralogy coming from those, those um, terrestrial sabcha, much less interesting, but the coastal sabcha can lead to precipitation of uh, dolomite. And this is one of the rare environments on Earth today where we know precipitation of dolomite happens um, pretty much in front of our eyes below 60 degrees. We still don't fully understand how it happens, but at least we understand the chemistry of it if we don't understand the kinetic of this process. So Sabcha, that's one way you can have dolomite, and that is one of the environment of deposition that is a, an arid environment of deposition with essentially evaporative diagenesis. But it really represents a small portion of the depositional system, and it typically will not lead to large volumes of dolomitization. What you find in this Sabcha is a crust of dolomite of maybe a meter maximum. So, so very um, small compared to the vast amount of dolomite that we see in the subsurface of the Jurassic, the Cretaceous, all of those sequences.